At this year's National Wrestling Championships, Penn State just won their eighth title in nine years. Mikhail Lewis stunned the crowd as a freshman, and Rutgers has their first ever national championship. I am so excited to talk about this past weekend because it's just a blur, but there's so much to discuss. So let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. Hello wrestling fans and welcome to the Fanco Wrestling Show. On this channel I'll talk a lot about wrestling news, tips, and lifestyle. And guess what? This channel is not going anywhere in the off season. So make sure you subscribe to be notified about everything going on in the postseason. Guys, this was such an incredible past weekend, and I have a lot of awards to give out in the first ever Fanco Wrestling Awards, and I want you guys to participate, talking about the best match of the year, the best pin of the year, the best takedown of the year. Make sure you check out the description below so you can vote on the first ever College Wrestling Awards. Let's get into today's topics. Who won this year's National Wrestling Championships? This was such a great weekend. I was in attendance in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at PB. PG Paints Arena, and let me tell you, the crowd was wild. Now, I will say that the crowd was filled with a lot of Penn State fans, but guess what? There were plenty of other fans to fill out the arena. But let's get into who actually won the championships. Well, let's get into 125 to heavyweight. Now, the matches actually did start at heavyweight, which was an interesting twist. They wanted to end on Bo Nickel. Fine, that's great, and I'm happy that he did win uh, his national championship at 197 pounds, but I'm going to go 125 to heavyweight. Starting at 121, 125 pounds, I actually picked Spencer Lee at the start of the tournament uh, before the tournament even started. I said that he... You know, he just needed to get over some hiccups, some bumps in the road. He ha he struggled a little bit in the postseason, or actually towards the end of the season, with uh, Nick Piccinini and, of course, Sebastian Rivera, who beat him twice already. But what happened is he had a pretty uh, solid ride to the finals in that he was dominating guys. He was absolutely showing his dominance. I believe he majored uh, or tech followed everybody up until the semis uh, until he made his way into the finals. And in the finals, he had a nice win over Jack Mueller, who was undefeated at the time uh, until Spencer Lee beat him. And fun fact, there were 12 guys that came into this tournament undefeated and four survived. Four survived undefeated. That's how brutal this tournament is to have all these top number one seeds getting just knocked off like it's nothing. At 133 pounds, I chose Stefan Michich to win this weight, but what ended up happening is Nick Suriano came out on top. And I'll tell you what, Nick Suriano looked on top of his game this entire tournament. There were there was a little bit of controversy in the finals match against Dayton Fix, but on his way up to the finals, he beat Lezak, he beat Michich. And he looked good in each of those matches. He was taking shots. He had a couple losses to these guys earlier in the season that he avenged uh, to Dayton Fix and to Micic because he was able to, like I kind of said, he studied that film and he was able to get better. And that's what you have to do in wrestling. That's exactly what Suriano did. Congrats to Nick Suriano, Rutgers' first national champion. And then at 141 pounds, I chose Yanni Diakamalis to win, and guess what? He did win. Yanni D was looking great. He won all the matches until up until the finals. Uh, whenever he wrestled Joey McKenna, and against Joey McKenna, that was a great finals match. Uh, Joey McKenna from Ohio State, Yanni from Cornell. These two guys looked pretty solid. Uh, it was awesome to watch these guys wrestle and scramble around. I consider Yanni probably the best scrambler in all of college wrestling, and I think it showed in a couple of his matches. And let's not forget about how good the match was between him and Dom Demas, who I thought was going to upset Yanni in the quarterfinals. Didn't end up happening. At 149 pounds, we have another Rutgers national champion in Anthony Ashnall. Ashnall went undefeated this season. He's one of these guys, just like Yanni, uh, who went undefeated in this entire season, and he just looked phenomenal. Uh, he was on top of his game, and even in the finals against Micah Jordan, who I thought, you know, Jordan's been getting closer and closer and closer to beating him, uh, but Ashnall was just on top of his game, and he won that title at 149. At 157 pounds, I don't think it's any surprise here that Jason Nolf won. Now, I will say that controversial match in the semifinals against Hayden Hydley of, of NC State. Wow. Do you guys think that Jason Nolf ha uh, got taken down there in the first period against uh, Hydley? I have studied this multiple times 
and I think that I would waive it no takedown, but I could honestly go either way. But with that being said, Nolf did end up making it to the finals and beating Tyler Berger, who was trash talking him on social media, but he took it all in good fun. And he is just a total sportsmanship type of guy. He has total class. And uh, congrats to Jason Nolf on his third national title and possible Hodge Trophy at 165. What a weight with Makai Lewis. This guy came out of nowhere and you know he he only had two losses on the season he had some quality wins he didn't have big quality wins like some of these other guys but he beat the number one seed in Alex Marinelli he beat the number four seed in Evan Wick and then he beat the number two seed in Vincenzo Joseph wow my hat is tipped off to this guy congratulations Mikhail Lewis you just earned yourself a spot on everybody's radar over the next couple of years and at now could be a possible four-timer depending on how he wrestles over the next couple of years but congrats on that title at 174 pounds Zahid Valencia this was I got this one wrong as well Zahid Valencia I chose Mark Hall because in the finals you know these two guys it's arguably one of the biggest rivalries in college wrestling to date uh it, just actively right now what do you guys think do you think they have the biggest rivalry I do. You know, they wrestled at the national tournament two years ago when Mark Hall beat him in the semis. Then last year, they wrestled in the finals when uh, Mark Hall just, he got he got beat pretty bad by Zahid. Then he beat him at Rec Hall this past season, uh, in the regular season. Then Zahid beat him for the national title. He looks solid and, you know, good job to, to Valencia. And at 184 pounds, Drew Foster. Drew Foster came out on top. Another guy who was not, you know, on anybody's radar to really win that weight. Of course, Miles Martin was the front runner at 184 pounds who ended up getting beat by Max Dean on the other side of the bracket from Drew Foster. And on the other side with Drew, Drew uh, you had Shakur Rashid who got beat by Chip Ness. Now, Foster, at that point, he had a pretty nice ride at the finals. He, he beat uh, Chip Ness pretty good and ended up winning that national title from UNI, Drew Foster, 184-pound national champ. At 197 pounds, Bo Nickel. Bo bonused his entire way to the finals. And in the finals, you know, he beat Colin Moore for the third time this season. And although he didn't major him or beat him by bonus, he still beat him, and that's all that matters. Bo Nickel won his third national title and is in contention with Jason Nolf to win that Hodge Trophy. At 285 pounds, Anthony Kassar is the story of the tournament, at least in my opinion. You know, this is a guy who didn't even start last year. He he beat Colin Moore out of nowhere during the regular season last year, and then he couldn't even start because Shakur Rashid kept beating him out for the spot. Well, this year he finally got his chance. He bulked up to heavyweight, beat Gable Stevenson in the semis, and in the finals, he beat Derek White of Oklahoma State and won the national title. First national championship, first national title, uh, national tournament, and he wins it. What a weight. And of course, the heavy, or the team uh, title went to Penn State University. This was a great tournament, and I think the finals matches were a lot of fun. My favorite was probably Spencer Lee. I loved watching him uh, win that title, and he, he just had such a big smile on his face afterwards. And you got to give a lot of credit to that kid for coming back, beating these guys, all these guys, you know. They, they persevere and they win that national title. Let me know what your favorite match was in the comments below. On to the next topic. Rutgers' first national champion is Nick Suriano. But let's not forget about Anthony Ashnall. You know, Anthony Ashnall, uh, if Nick Suriano never transferred to uh, Rutgers, uh, well, one, I don't know if he would have won a national title, but two, Anthony Ashnall would have been a national champ. But congrats to both these guys on winning. You know, let's talk about Suriano first because, of course, he's the first national champion because he is higher in, or a lower weight at 133 pounds. So Suriano, I, at the beginning of this or at the beginning of this tournament, he was 29 and three and finished the tournament at 34 and three with a national title in his hands. I, he had losses to Michich DeSanto and Fick. Uh, throughout the year so at this tournament though he avenged those losses he beat two of those three guys he never got to wrestle the Santo uh, because he was beat earlier in the tournament uh, by Micic but he did beat Micic and he beat Fix and you know I give this guy all the credit he, he 
he's been taking a lot of crap. He transferred from Penn State to Rutgers on a personal note. And that got a lot of guys thinking, a lot of people thinking the wrong way about him. But he's doing that for his personal reasons. And guess what? They worked for him. Now he's a national champion. Uh, up until that point, you know, his route to the finals, he had a major decision over Dylan Duncan. He had a decision over Corbin Myers. Then he... Uh, pinned Ethan Lezak and he was just looking so solid you know I really do think that he studied uh his film and saw what he did wrong and he improved on that and you know hats off to him and then of course he beat Michich and Fix and then in uh on the the upper side uh, at 149 pounds with Anthony Ashnall who's Rutgers first ever four-time All-American and now he is Rutgers second national champion he had wins over Jeffries, Deegan, and Kolodzik, who he had beat earlier in the season, and then he beat uh, Micah Jordan in the finals. This, you know, he had a year off last year because of injury, and he's just always in the hunt for that title. And this year, he, you know, he beat two guys at the time who were number one in Micah Jordan and Kolodzik, and he beat them a few times throughout the season. So it's not just like you know, one-off win, and, and now he has a title. He beat them multiple times. He showed his his uh, resilience, his dominance this entire season, and he deserves that national title. Now, New Jersey also just had a big year in general. They had four national champs, uh, New Jersey, everybody who calls their home state New Jersey. Of course, you have Suriano and Ashnall, but you also have Anthony Cassar, who won at heavyweight. Uh, of course, he's wrestling for Penn State, but he is a New Jersey guy. And then you have McCann. Kyle Lewis, who is the freshman who just kind of came out of nowhere from Virginia Tech, and he's also a New Jersey guy. So Rutgers or for New Jersey has four national champions this year, more than any other state. Wow, that that is really something uh, in my mind because you know Pennsylvania they had two national champions uh, and they had a lot of guys all American, but New Jersey just showed everybody up this year. Kind of, you know, it's it's kind of nuts, and then. Also, along that regards, you know, this is Kassar's first tournament, first national tournament, and he won it. And then you have Makai Lewis, who's Virginia Tech's first national champion. So this was really a historic year for Rutgers wrestling, for New Jersey wrestling, and congrats to all those guys. But, you know, with all of this, with all of the national championships happening, there's bound to be some controversy, and there was. And, you know, the hands of the face call really wasn't as big of an issue this tournament as I thought it would be, and that's because the referees beforehand, they kind of looked at everything going on with hands of the face, and they said, we don't want to cost somebody a national title. And there are three matches in particular that there were just some crazy calls. The first is the semifinals match between Hayden Hiley and Jason Nolf. Then two are actually finals matches between Nick Seriano and Dayton Fix, and we have Yanni versus McKenna. So I'm going to go into each of these, just talking about the controversial call, what happened, what my thoughts are on each of them. First of all, Hiley versus Nolf. These two wrestled at 157 pounds in the semifinals. In the first period, Hiley had what looked like a takedown at the end of the period, and this would have been huge for the match uh, going into the second period. This call, uh, so Hiley was in on the legs. He took Nolf down, but Nolf, of course, I mean, he can get out of any position. He had the wizard and ended up uh, getting the wizard out, but as he, and he had his hand on the mat, but as the wizard came out, his hand came up, Hiley came around, and it was called, uh, originally it was called a takedown. It was, it was uh, reversed the call at, on the official's reveal. And to be honest with you, I don't think this was a takedown. Now, and for the sole reason that I believe his hand was off the mat. Now, if you told me uh, that it was a takedown and this is your, these are your reasons why, I understand. You know, this was a split second decision, a split second that it looks like Nolf had his hand off the mat. That's why I don't think he had it. Now, Nolf, of course, ended up winning that match and ended up winning the title. But, you know, what would have happened if Hiley would have won? That was pretty darn crazy. And then it was a pretty close taken out at the end of that match as well. And throughout this entire tournament, there were, I believe, 120, uh, 120 some uh, reviews, which is like 
double the past couple of years. Now, 27 of those calls were actually overturned, but not too many of them were overturned. And another one that was not overturned, but listen, Nick Suriano and Deaton Fix always wrestle these crazy matches. They wrestled in high school for 30 minutes straight uh, because of un this unlimited overtime. Then this past season, they wrestled and there was a controversial hands of the face call, stalling calls, and it happened again in the national finals. I couldn't believe my eyes when I was seeing all this. So of course, Fix is leading one zip uh, going into the or in the second period with an escape, he had there was a hands to the face challenge from John Smith, and let me tell you, I was in the arena, boos were raining throughout. People were so so mad about this hands to the face challenge, and John Smith just likes to challenge these very minute details and. It, it, in my opinion, it's kind of ridiculous that you're going to challenge all of these little things like hands to the face, but guess what? It's the rules, so we have to give it to him. He, I mean, it's the, if the rule is if he can't touch your face and John Smith challenges that, he's just following the rules. It's, is it ridiculous? Yes, but is it called for? Sure. But anyway, so he called that hands to the face, did not get that. Then throughout the entire rest of the match, really, Suriano, uh, you know, it was one to one after the third, but with a lot of his riding time that he had, Suriano kept hanging on to his ankle, kept hanging on to fix his ankle, and he kept getting that uh, count with because you can't hang on to that ankle for too long uh, for more than five seconds, and he ended up getting a stalling call, uh, getting a stalling point for Dayton Fix, who ended up getting getting points from that. But anyway, uh, in overtime. Now, in in one of the sudden victory rideouts, Dayton Fix threw the boots in. He was up two to one. Uh, he was up two to one because of that stalling call. Threw the boots in, and he was riding Nick out. I thought that was it. But then, for whatever reason, a stalemate got called. There were nine seconds left. Nick Suriano escapes. <laughs> they go to another period, and this is where the call really comes into play. Is uh, Fix was going in on a shot, couldn't didn't end up getting it. And Suriano looked like he grabbed the headgear and then ended up going in for shot, getting taken down. He celebrated because he, he won. Well, John Smith saw that there was a headgear grab. Dayton Fix looked like he stopped wrestling because he was like, are you kidding me? He just grabbed his headgear. I mean, maybe that's a lesson that you should never stop wrestling. But, you know, not, not that I'm a coach, not that I'm telling Fix what to do or, and, and by any means. But this was a very very interesting call looking afterwards and you know I, I think Suriano out wrestled him you know I, I really do think that Nick Suriano out wrestled Dayton Fix the entire match uh, because because of how he's looking the entire tournament but that match he was just going after him and and there wasn't a whole lot of action on each of these guys feet but I think Suriano overall looked pretty good this call the officials reviewed it they kind of said it was just like a, a push out of the way but to me, it looked like he had five fingers. And the unfortunate part for Suriano is I don't think he's going to live this down. I think that there's always going to be a little asterisk on his national title, uh, which is very unfortunate. And that's why I think he really needs to go hard this next season and get another national title to show these people, you know, he's not just some chump. He, it's who won off, off of a call or anything like that. He's actually the the rightful guy to win this so that was that controversial call and the third controversial call was in yanni versus mckenna so this match did yanni have full control on his takedown so it was three to two in favor of mckenna in the third period there were about 15 20 seconds left and these guys were scrambling like like they always do well yanni ended up getting the takedown or looking like he had the takedown he threw his leg over mckenna who had shot in threw his leg over he had maybe control for one second and that's kind of what the refs were seeing and that went to review and they did say that Yanni had control for enough time and ended up getting flipped out McKenna got uh, the escape and it would end up being tied up went to overtime Yanni got this crazy takedown in OT but was that a takedown that Yanni had that's one where I don't know if that was a takedown and I I feel bad for McKenna if that was the case. But what you know, with all of these three things, at this point, it doesn't matter. These guys are national champs, Nolf, uh, Suriano, and um, 
and Yanni. They're all national champs, so these calls really don't matter at this point. But how can we handle these moving forward? Well, maybe the, the biggest thing would be a third-party review. You know, these, these are the refs, the same refs. They make the call, then they go out on the side of the mat, they review their decision, and... You know, is there enough evidence to point either way? That's kind of what they're reviewing. Maybe there should be a third party in the back room, uh, and, and not at every tournament, not at every match, but just for the national tournament. You know, this is the biggest stage in wrestling. There should be very extreme evidence to go in one or other direction, and we need to have a third party review from another ref in a back room who's actually able to see what's going on. That way also the refs that are on the mat aren't really getting booed or uh, you know, in thre in threatened of their life, uh, which I'm sure a couple of these fans have threatened their life. Crazy ones. But that's that's it. You know, these are the three guys are national champs. There's not much we can do about it now. But let me know what you think uh, can be done about it in the future. And on to another topic. What was Penn State's wrestling performance like at this wrestling championships? Of course, Penn State won their eighth title in nine years and they won it before the last session even started this was unlike last year which came down to the wire but this year they just they just absolutely crushed everybody you know Ohio State ended up coming in second place so Penn State had 137.5 points that's what they ended with Ohio State had 96.5 Oklahoma State had 84 in Iowa and fourth place had 76 points so a lot of people are wondering, you know, how, how, just how great was Penn State's performance this year? Of course, they had three national champions out of five total finalists, but how was their performance? Well, let's start with the team score first. This was the 12th biggest deficit of all time. Out of every national tournament, this is the 12th biggest deficit. Uh, there were 41 points ahead of Ohio State. And, you know, last year was extremely close, but this year, Penn State just dominated. What happened is uh, they had five finalists, seven All Americans out of their nine qualifiers. The guys that didn't uh, ended up end up placing were Shakur Rashid and uh, Brady Berge at 149 pounds. The, the, these are both you know unfortunate cases, but they're five finalists. You know, well, first let's let's start with uh, Brady Berge. You know, this is his first time wrestling the tournament, and you know he's he's of, co of course going to have those nervous jitters, and he, I think he wrestled pretty well, and I think he will do better in the future. But Shakur Rashid, I mean, what happened there? This is the second year in a row that he choked, and you know whether it was the stage, whether it was his seed that he, you know did or did not deserve i would probably say did not deserve at this point uh, you know he's the number two seed and he didn't even all american that was very harmful for penn state they penn state you know with him possibly making the finals or even all american he could have had a lot more points scored for penn state even beating their all-time points record does that really matter in the long run no but it is unfortunate for Penn State that Rashid did an All-American. Then what else happened? Well, we had a close match between uh, Nolf and Hiley, but Nolf ended up winning that and ended up winning the national championship. Bo Nickel won his national title. Now, with Bo's national title, you know, it was very close finals match. And, you know, Nolf, of course, ended up majoring Berger in the finals, but Nichols was a lot closer with uh, Colin Moore. And... Listen, even with that close match, I think Nickel was in control the entire time. He knew what he was doing. And what a lot of people forget is he's going for a national title. And at this point, the team title is locked up. That really doesn't even matter at this point. He's going in this to win another national title, his third, and even going for the Hodge. But, you know, if, if he goes for that extra turn, extra crazy takedown extra whatever it is in that match and he doesn't get it and something goes wrong which a lot of times with Bo it, it does not go wrong but if it does go wrong he's regretting that for the rest of his life just because he wanted to score a couple more points so you know Bo he dominated this entire tournament and he had a little bit of a safer match in the finals but guess what he still won he's a national champion along with Anthony Kassar and this is one of my favorite stories you know Kassar his first national tournament ever first year starting ever and he wins the title this just shows you the depth of Penn State did Penn State underperform at this tournament absolutely not they crushed it and with Anthony Kassar 
they showed this. They showed their depth in lineup, and they show what they have for years to come. Kassar, the first ever time he made a high school state tournament, he won it. First time he made a national tournament, he won it. And Kassar may or may not have another year of eligibility. He's trying to get a medical uh, red shirt right now uh, because of his injuries in the past. So if he's granted another year, that would be huge for Penn State. Now, what else is going on? Well, Chenzo, unfortunately, he did. He was one of the uh, upsets in the finals along with Mark Hall. Chenzo lost to uh, Makai Lewis from Virginia Tech, who's a freshman. And this is a little bit of an interesting story because what happened is Imar, everybody saw him as pretty much untouchable back in the day. He's one of the only guys who's, he's the only guy who beat Jason Nolf back, way back when. And then Chenzo came in kind of out of nowhere and pinned Imar, then beat him again the next year. And now we have Chenzo, who's the number one seed up on top. And what happens? He's knocked off by Makai Lewis, who is a freshman, and like Vincenzo was a freshman at the time. Will Makai stay on top this next year? Will Chenzo beat him again? Because he still has another shot at him to win a third title. I th I happen to think that he will because that's that's what Penn State does. They they really close the gap on this. Uh, then of course we had Nick Lee finishing in fifth place and Roman Bravo Young in eighth place. And these two guys wrestled really great tournaments. And uh, I think Penn State should be extremely proud of them. And in the upcoming year, you know, one piece of news that Penn State has coming in is Kyle Connell from Kent State. He is actually possibly committing to Penn State wrestling in uh, for 197 pounds if he's granted another year of eligibility just like Kassar and I believe Rashid's going for this too is that medical year uh he, if he's granted that he could be wrestling for Penn State at 197 pounds taking place for Bo Nickel and that could be massive who else is Penn State having have coming in well they have Brody Teske uh, who's a lighter weight and then Michael Beard as well as Seth Neville's and you know they just have strong recruits and I think Penn State showed a great performance this year uh, even though they had a couple losses, they still won the tournament in in exciting fashion, and I'm so excited to see what Penn State has in store for the future. And on to the last topic of the day, the freshman phenoms at the national tournament. This was the year of freshman phenoms, and I'll, I'm just going to go down by weight class, uh, a, a couple of the freshmen from each weight class who really showed up at the tournament. First of all, uh, you know, I, I'll get to Makai Lewis in a little bit because he's he was the OW in the talk of the entire tournament at the end of it. And as he deserves to be. But at 125 pounds, Pat Glory of Princeton finished in seventh place. He had a pretty strong tournament, uh, and you know, I give him props. But another guy from Cornell is Vital Arouge. Uh, Vito, as you know, as they call him, uh, he finished in fourth. He actually beat Nick Piccinini, which not a lot of people were talking about, but he beat him in the placing rounds uh, in the Conci semis. Now he did end up uh, he lost to Rivera in the uh, upper half of the bracket, but he beat Pitch in this Conchi semi. What a match there. And uh, Vito ended up finishing in fourth place. Uh, he lost to Rivera twice. At 133 pounds, I mean, it's really a no-brainer. The freshman phenom here is Dayton Fix, who ended up making it to the finals in his first year at the tournament and lost to Nick Suriano. But he had a pretty nice ride there. He had wins over Ernesty as well as Pletcher. And I look forward to seeing him wrestle uh, in the upcoming years, possibly winning a couple titles. At 141 pounds, Dom Demas. So he's from uh, Oklahoma University. And he finished in fourth place. This is a guy who I, I honestly didn't know much about going into the tournament, but I, I love to watch him wrestle. He wrestled Yanni extremely close uh, up until, you know, I believe it was the second or third period, but he was looking really, really solid there. Uh, he had wins over Canaan Store of Michigan as well as Nick Lee. Uh, great tournament for him. I'm looking forward to see what he does in the future. At 149 pounds, Austin O'Connor. Big upset by Austin O'Connor, uh, who who ended up beating uh, Fine Silver, Mitch Fine Silver, who's the number three seed. O'Connor had the number six seed uh, from UNC. He ended up beating Fine Silver twice in this tournament. Now he did end up losing to Michael Jordan in the semifinals, but a pretty great uh, ride for him. He finished in third place overall. At 165 pounds is Mikhail Lewis, guys. This guy, this kid. Mikhail Lewis as a freshman winning the title 
I mean, to win the title as a freshman is, first of all, unbelievable. But this guy, he he kind of came out of nowhere. He had two losses on the season. Didn't have a whole lot of quality wins, and I think that's why he was seeded so low. He was the eighth seed. He beat the number one seed in Alex Marinelli. Then he beat the number four seed in Evan Wick. And then he beat the number two seed in Vincenzo Joseph. The only guy he didn't beat was the number three seed, which he didn't get a chance to wrestle. But he showed up to this tournament. And sometimes that's all it takes is one great weekend to win a national title. And that's just what Mkai did. And I can't wait to see what he does in the future. This this kid is a freshman phenom. He won the outstanding wrestler of the tournament, as I think he deserves it. Uh, he's not going to win the Hodge Trophy or anything because, you know, he, uh, although he did have a great season, I just don't think he had the the quality wins, all the upsets, the... the um, the bonus points, I should say, but he had a great national tournament, and I have to give my tip my hat off to this guy at, at 285 pounds. The other, the last freshman phenom that I have is Gable Stevenson from Minnesota. This guy, he Stevenson wanted to come in here, win four national titles undefeated, and you know. Anthony Gasar came in here. He beat Stevenson twice in very close matches. But Stevenson's just a fun guy to watch wrestle. He's aggressive. He takes shots. He he finishes great shots on guys and just keeps up the pace always. And he's one of the better heavyweights I've seen in the last couple of years for sure. Of course, it's it's tough to compare that because you have Kyle Snyder. You have the Snyder man up top. But Stevenson's another great heavyweight, and we're blessed with such great heavyweights. Uh, he bonused his way, actually, all the way to the semis, lost a close match to see, uh, to Kassar, and then he ended up beating Hamida and Wood to take third place as a freshman. I see this guy coming out uh, probably in the national finals over the next couple of years, and he's just done a great job. And if you guys are interested in the uh freshman phenom and want to vote on your favorite freshman phenom the fanco wrestling awards are coming up next week make sure you vote in the description below i have a link so you can vote on all your favorite matches favorite duels favorite freshman of the of this year and I'll be revealing those winners next week. So this was a phenomenal tournament, the National Wrestling Championships. I had such a fun time. I actually ran into a couple of you guys, and I appreciate you guys reaching out, saying hi. I enjoyed talking to you. Uh, and I just had such a fun time with this National Wrestling Championships, and I'm looking forward to what happens in 2020. That's it for the Fanco Wrestling Show, guys. Make sure you check out these upcoming videos and subscribe so you know all about what's happening in the offseason. Thanks for watching.